Good day and welcome back to the Hopkins Demonstration Forest. Today is part four of what is a forest. And we're going to be talking about two more of those environmental benefits that a forest has. The habitat and also related to that, the food chain. So what is habitat out here in a forest? Well, there's four parts to a habitat. An animal's habitat is what we're talking about. And I'm right now here in our restored wetlands. They're uh, in the process of uh, getting restored. And about two years ago, we came through and cleared out a lot of the unwanted vegetation and put in some features that would be beneficial to an animal's habitat. So again, habitat, four parts. What are those four parts? Maybe you could think about that in your head. What does an animal need? What do you need? Well, probably one of the first things you can think about, an animal needs food. So an animal has to find food in its habitat, the area that it lives. Another thing you can probably think about real easy, it's right here, the water. Some animals need a lot of water. Some animals need just a little bit. So they need access to that water either on the surface or through the vegetation or plants that they eat. And then the next thing, it's kind of a cool day out here, a little chilly, but uh, it's not too bad. But uh, I've got a jacket on. I can bring along my portable shelter. Animals sometimes have their own. They have thick fur, uh, different layers uh, to keep them warm. But oftentimes they can't quickly just add on a layer of fur, an extra layer of fat. They need to find that shelter. So sometimes those animals build shelter Sometimes they just go out and find a convenient place in some thick brush to get out of that cold and wet, or maybe that same place when it's dry out. And now the fourth one, and this is often the most difficult because you think, gosh, what do I need? I got the food, my water and shelter. So there's four things that are pretty easy to identify, but what is that fourth one? And a lot of times people go, oh, I, I need friendship. I, there's lots of things that we like, but it's not a necessity to survive. So that fourth one, sometimes it's referred to as just as simply saying a space, but I like to say the right environment, conditions. Remember the video four, I mean three, uh, the abiotic and biotic. The animal needs the right environment. Those abiotic, non-living factors. Some animals need the water. Think of a fish, that right environment. That's kind of its shelter, but it's an environment. The temperature extremes, those are an abiotic part of the forest too. The hot and cold. Some animals can live in very extreme conditions where it gets very cold or very hot. Some have a very narrow band that they can live in. So those environmental conditions, the space is number four. So food, water, shelter, and the right space and environmental conditions. So if you look here at the pond, you might think what would live in there. And uh, if we got down, which we will do a little bit later in a video uh, on a warmer day, hopefully uh, sooner in the spring than later, uh, there's a lot of activity going on. We're gonna investigate some of the critters. But uh, you could probably guess there's gonna be some frogs, salamanders, lots of macroinvertebrates. We've got even, you know, sometimes a bigger pond uh, behind me or in front of me or behind you. Uh, that has some fish and crawfish and some larger critters in it. But uh, an animal's habitat, basically for review, food, water, shelter, and the right space and environmental conditions. So that leads us to what type of animals would be in a pond. Well, that's when you have to think about uh, you know, what they need. It's the right space, okay? So if we can look at the water, we could take the water's temperature. Um, enough water for them to live and so that gives them that environment and their shelter. Obviously they have water. But the one thing that always needs to be investigated is the food. And that's why the next part, the food chain. A food chain is a very important part of a forest function and allows us to identify what might exist in that area. So ecosystems, that unique area that has the living and non-living, the biotic and abiotic, you can kind of see this pond very, very unique as we go away from it. Conditions change. So we focus on this pond and the food chain. We kind of need to think, where does that food chain start? Well, everything here on our planet, nearly everything, all the energy we get comes from the sun. So the sun provides that energy to start the food chain off. 
And the first part is the sun. But when we get here on the surface of our planet and that sun goes away for the night, we still have the, the next part uh, all around us right here. And that are, that those are the plants. And we call those things the producers, the primary producers. They make their own food from the sun. And they use a process called photosynthesis, taking the sunlight, taking the CO2 out of the air, and also um, the nutrients in the soil along with that water, and they make their own food, the primary producers. So they create their own energy. And that energy in the plants is transferred to the next level, a consumer. And there's two types of consumers, primary and secondary. A primary consumer, we kind of would think of them as being uh, you know, maybe a, a vegetarian or an herbivore that's eating that plant uh, or, or primary producer, but that primary consumer is eating that plant to get its energy. So just think of like an herbivore. A good example out here at Hopkins, a deer uh, that might be coming down to this pond to get a drink, maybe snack on some of the vegetation and go off into the, the cover and, and hide for the day. The next step is, is also another consumer, but a secondary consumer. And they might be, they're not an herbivore solely, but they're either a carnivore, eats another animal, or they might be like most animals, an omnivore, one that eats both plant and animal. But that secondary consumer gets its energy from another consumer. So we go from the sun, to the producers, to the consumers. And then when that's all done, the final step is the decomposers. The decomposers are a group of uh, small organisms, sometimes so tiny we can't see them, uh, bacteria, but also very common in the forest, the mushrooms, the fungus, that take that material that grew from the sun, was consumed by an animal, and then deposited somewhere in the forest or when that animal passes on, those organisms come and break that down and get it back into the soil and the process starts all over again. So rather than calling it a food chain, another topic we're going to talk about a little later is the food web. And that's the interconnection of all these animals from the sun creating the plants, the animals that eat those plants, the animals that eat some of those animals, and it kind of ties it all together uh, to really analyze and look at an ecosystem to find out what animals should exist here because we have all the conditions they like. They may not be here, but uh, they could. So it's kind of a quick review on habitat, food, water, shelter in the right space and environment, and also the food chain. That link between the sun, the plants, the producers, the animals, us, the consumers, and then the decomposers and that cycle that goes around and around. So stay tuned, uh, our next video is coming up real soon. And uh, you know, if you like these videos, always uh, give some feedback and click the like button and hope to see you out here real soon or, or on a video. Thanks a lot.